X Winder, the original desktop filament winder. This video details the assembly of the 4 axis upgrade model 4X34. This is a picture from the assembly diagrams and listing of all the parts that ship with the 4X34 upgrade. So, first we'll start with the right mandrel drive post. You're looking at an exploded view from the assembly drawings of the right mandrel drive post. First, we are attaching the 10 inch long mandrel post to the 3 inch long short post with the side plates and four double T nuts. Keep the bolts a bit loose at this point as we've got a lot of other items to attach. Next, we're sliding in the motor mount plate to the 3 inch short post with the double T nut. Again, we're keeping the bolts loose at this point. Now, slide the mandrel drive belt over the mandrel post, then place a single T nut in the slot of the mandrel post and insert the 2.5 inch bolt through the motor mount plate so that the 2.5 inch bolt engages the single T nut in the post slot. Leave this bolt loose for now, but make sure the threads are engaged. Here is the mantle drive post from the smaller X winder, and we'll be reusing all these parts as shown here with the two axis mandrel parts on the left and the four axis parts on the right. Next, we're going to mount the mandrel shaft drive gear, which includes three large gear plates, the thin gear end plates, the small circular swash plate, and the two screw clamping shaft collar. Make sure you're using the correct shaft collar. It's basically two C-shaped clamping parts with two screws. Next, we'll slide the, the half-inch outer diameter shaft through the mandrel post bronze bearings, and at this point, we just slide on a nylon washer, the swash plate, and the two-screw clamping shaft collar. Go ahead and tighten down the two-screw uh, cla clamping shaft collar with the provided hex key against the swash plate. The bronze bearing the nylon washer and the swash plate and the shaft collar should be pressed against the mandrel post firmly enough to allow free rotation of the mandrel shaft. Make sure that the two screw clamping shaft collar is now tightened down in place. Next we prepare the mandrel drive gear from the three gear plates, the two thin end plates, and the four one and three quarter inch bolts. Next, we slide this drive gear onto the shaft and make sure that the four bolts enter the swash plate and tighten down the four bolts. When tightening down the bolts, go around in a circular fashion from bolt to bolt and incrementally tighten them down slowly so that the drive gear is centered about the mandrel axis. Now, mount the mandrel motor to the motor plate with the four 5 millimeter button head bolts that came out of the old mandrel motor. Next, slide on the 24 tooth gear on the mandrel motor shaft and position it so that it is, it is in the same plane so that the belt is not misaligned as the larger drive gear. Then tighten down the two set screws on the gear to affix it to the motor shaft. Now, loop the drive belt over both gears and let the motor plate slide down the three inch post so that the belt becomes firmly tightened, but not so tight that the rotation is impeded. Then, tighten down the two bolts at the bottom of the plate to secure the plate to the three inch post. Also, tighten down the two and a half inch bolt. There should be a small amount of clearance between this bolt and the drive belt as shown. Now, loosely screw in the three concealed end nuts in the bottom of the motor posts. Next, you'll need to drill a quarter inch hole that's a seven millimeter diameter or you can go slightly more than that. As shown, two and a half inches from the end of the front mandrel post as shown. You should already have holes at one half inch and one and a half inches from your original winder setup. Now slide the mandrel post in the front long bar and tighten everything down. To make this a bit easier, I try and hang the winder frame over the edge of the table to get access to the bottom side of the corner plate. That's basically it for the assembly of the mandrel drive post. In the future, if you need more mandrel torque, you can add a second mandrel motor as shown with the purchase of our dual mandrel motor upgrade. For the other mandrel post, all you need to do is swap out the shorter mandrel post with the provided longer 10-inch mandrel post. 
That concludes the mandrel post assembly and next we'll go to work on the carriage motor post. Here's a schematic of the carriage motor post as shown in the assembly diagrams with several isometric views from the CAD model. Here's a close-up of the CAD model showing the completed assembly. First, we'll attach the 3-inch motor post to the L-shaped corner base plate with two quarter 20 half-inch long button head bolts. Go ahead and tighten these two bolts down. Next, we've installed two double T-nuts and six single T-nuts to the corner base plate as shown. You should be reusing all the hardware from your original winder for this purpose. Then, we slide in the 3 inch wide, 7 inch long motor support bar onto the two double T-nuts and install the two rubber feet as shown. Then we apply the adhesive backed rubber sheet onto the 3 inch wide, 7 inch long motor support bar. Now we slide the whole motor assembly onto the frame crossbar and tighten it down. Now we're ready to install the new NEMA 34 motor with the parts shown. So we attach the motor mount plate to the front of the motor with the 5 millimeter button head bolts from the original motor and also install the double T-nut on the mount plate. Now the motor mount plate slides down onto the motor post and is held in by the double T-nut. Also on the bottom of the motor mount plate half inch bolts are inserted to secure the plate to the motor mount bar and the right angle brace is secured to the plate and to the frame crossbar as shown. Now insert the 24 tooth motor gear to the motor shaft and position the gear so that it's in line with the carriage attach point. Once in line, tighten down the two set screws in the motor gear and install the carriage drive belt as shown. That completes the carriage motor post installation. Here is an assembly schematic of the carriage post as shown in the exploded assembly diagrams. This is a perspective view of the CAD model of the completed assembly and note that some of the hardware is included but also optionally installed at your discretion. There is not a lot to do here except transfer the 10 tooth gear and shaft from the original winder to the new upgraded winder and exchange the corner base plate. Here is the hardware we will reuse from the original winder. Like the motor post, the first thing to do is to attach the 3 inch carriage post. This 3 inch carriage post has the 5 8 inch bore clear through for the rotating shaft. Go ahead and attach this 3 inch carriage post to the corner base plate as shown and insert the bronze bearing shaft and 10 tooth gear into the carriage post. Now outfit the base plate with six single T-nuts and slide the base plate onto the frame crossbar and tighten down. Now it gets a little tricky because you need to attach the long bars to the newly installed corner base plate. What I've found useful is to remove the four single T-nuts from the base plate and slide them into the slots of the long bars. Now let the long bars rest down on the base plate and from the bottom of the long bars move the T-nuts into positions by sliding them along the slots. Now with the frame slightly hanging over the table you can insert the half inch long bolts into the bottom of the base plate and find the threads of the single T-nuts to tighten them down. Once that's done we're finished with the carriage post and we can move on to the carriage itself. Here is a perspective view of the 4-axis carriage CAD model. As an overview, there are five main tasks that will be accomplished during the upgrade, beginning with number one. We're going to drill new holes in the carriage wing bars because the vertical posts need to be moved rearward. Number two, we're going to replace the vertical carriage posts with longer posts. Number three, we are getting rid of the NEMA 17 motors and using the larger NEMA 23 motors that were on the old carriage and mandrel axes but will now be installed on the delivery head linear and rotary axes. Number four, we are adding a larger gear head on the rotary axis. And number five, we will be adding a larger gear and axle for the linear head belt. So let's get started. Here's the four axis carriage from the assembly diagram showing the installation of the new longer vertical posts. These vertical posts are more rearward as compared to the original 4X23 winder and you'll need to make two drill holes in each of the carriage wing bars. As you can see on the right hand side of this schematic, 
There are already four existing holes in each of the wing bars and we will be adding new quarter inch holes, that's seven or eight millimeter holes, at distances of two and a half inches, that's 64 millimeters, and 15 inches, that's 381 millimeters, from the front end of the wing bars. So here's the wheel plate after disassembling the four axis carriage and here we're making the new four bore holes. Before making the new bore holes, the wing bars look like this and after the holes are drilled, the new holes are drilled, the wing bars look like this. With those new four drill holes bored, the concealed end nuts are inserted into the long vertical posts and the posts joined to the wing bars as shown. We also attach to the wing bars the front and rear resin bath rest plates with one half inch bolts and single T-nuts and the rear plate is located so that when the resin bath is inserted the bath rests on the front and rear plates. Here is how the four axis carriage looks after completing this step. Next, we move to the upper portion of the carriage. Here is a schematic from the assembly diagram showing the upper portion. <coughs> First, we outfit the new longer top plates with the black acetyl slides from the original winder <coughs> and secure them in place. Excuse me. Also included are four double T-nuts that will attach the upper plates to the vertical posts. Here are the upper plates secured to the four vertical posts. Next, we insert the three and a half inch long with a half inch outer diameter stainless shaft and ten tooth gear with shaft collar as shown. Now we'll attach the delivery head linear axis motor in the sliding slot as shown using a double T-nut and the new motor mount plate. This motor is the NEMA 23 that was taken from your original winder's carriage or mandrel axis. When attaching the 16 tooth gear to the motor shaft and before tightening down the set screws in the gear, make sure the linear drive belt is aligned with both gears. Now for the rotary axis. Here is the assembly schematic of the carriage delivery head rotary axis. We're going to install the longer slide bar, the larger Nebra 23 motor, and the larger rotary drive belt and gear. After taking off the original delivery head parts, we are left with the cage structure and the barrel. Make sure that the barrel is as far forward as possible so that the new plate gear has more room to fit. There are set screws on the large barrel shaft collars that need to be adjusted to move the barrel forward. Next, install the three small gear plates on the barrel and insert the new 7 8 inch socket head bolts and reassemble as shown. Make sure that the limit switch trigger is in the 6 o'clock position when the concave roller is in the horizontal position. Now install the new longer slide bar and insert the slide bar into the pathway created by the black acetyl slides that are affixed to the upper two plates. The slide bar should be loose for now and we'll tighten it up a little bit later. Next, install the new motor mount plate onto the NEMA 23 and then slide onto the 16 tooth gear onto the motor shaft. If the motor shaft has been burred by the previous set screws, you can lightly sand the motor shaft to deburr it so that the gear slides more easily onto the motor shaft. Now mount the motor plate to the slide slot with a double T-nut and install the rotary drive belt and tension the belt by sliding the motor plate upward. The drive belt should be tight enough to engage the gear teeth but not too tight to impede rotary motion of the motor and gear. The slide bar needs to be properly aligned and tightened as it traverses the black acetyl slides. To accomplish this, there are two ways to adjust the width of the upper plates. The distance between the front two vertical posts can be adjusted by the oversized holes on the horizontal bar that connects the two posts. Second, Insert the three and a half inch socket head bolt and nylon lock nut as shown and tighten to adjust the vertical plate width and hence the alignment of the sliding bar. Next, secure the linear belt to the sliding bar by installing the clamping plate as shown. 
When the slide bar is fully retracted, the clamping plate should be secured in the most rearward position without impacting the motor gear. Next, install the extra long wire limit switch as shown and plug in the two motors and two limit switches into the black junction box. The remainder of the four axis carriage should be reassembled in the same configuration as the original carriage. There are several important items you'll need to do before returning the winder to operation. Number one, if you have moved the carriage limit switch during your rebuild process, you need to remeasure the carriage offset distance as shown and input that offset distance into the designer software in the settings page. Now that you've upgraded, you also need to go back through the executor software setup wizard by first clicking on the gear icon button on the executor software user interface. Then in step three of the wizard, select the new winder type and then complete the wizard by clicking next and saving the new settings. Next, make sure you plug in the new larger power supply which outputs 24 volts and 5 amps and it can accept wall socket voltage from 100 to 240 volts AC so it can be used in most countries around the world. Number four, also in the setup wizard increase the new amperage supplied to the motors by increasing the voltage to the recommended level of four to five amps. After these final steps your winder should be ready to go for its first winding session in the new configuration.